My controller is coming along nicely. However, I have a small problem, and that is that I have a lot of repeated code in here, as you can see. I'm instantiating a new data context, and I'm asking Link to SQL to go do a lot of things for me. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to test this controller. So if I want to test this index action, now I'm going to have to create a data context, and which means I'm going to have to create a connection to a database, and then I'm going to have to test using the data that's in that database. And that's not a good idea for a couple of reasons. One, primarily, is speed. Uh, anytime you have to access a database, if it's got a lot of records in it, well, that's just a pain in the butt. The other thing is uh, that it's easy to fail. So uh, if you have some tests that are based on the data that's in that dinner's table, uh, well, you can't guarantee that you know what data is going to be in there unless you stop and build your database for every test, and that's just ridiculous. And here we go. We have a very, very simple interface. We have uh, add, update, delete, get dinner, find all dinners. Uh, notice here that I'm returning iQueryable. This is by design. Um, I like having the flexibility of being able to tack on uh, things, uh, and I don't need to keep adjusting my repository interface. Well, now that I've done that, all I have to do is implement a, uh, a repository implementation, and I can now uh, change out my controller. So let's do that. Here is my SQL dinner repository implementation that uses link to SQL. Pretty simple code in here, and not not uh, not not anything terribly shocking. So now what I can do is come back in here to my dinners controller, and I can use that dinner repository straight inside the uh, the dinner controller here. So I'm just going to call this repository. And the best way to use this is uh, a nice pattern that's going to allow the repository to be passed in. Uh, the dinner controller is going to have a dependency on this repository, and by that, uh, it can't really exist and can't really do much. As you can see, all of these actions here are data sensitive. It can't do anything unless it has this repository, so that is called a dependency. And what I want to make sure I can do is I want to make sure I can pass that dependency in when the controller is instantiated. In other words, I want to inject that dependency. So if I switch those words around, this is the dependency injection pattern. So I simply do public dinner controller, create a default constructor. This is the constructor that ASP.NET MVC is going to use, and so that means I'm going to default the repository here to a new uh, SQL dinner repository. Great, and that is going to be the one that uses link to SQL. Now what I want to do is I want to create another one that takes in an iDinner repository argument, and this is the one that testing is going to use, and again I just set this like that. Great. So now I just need to come down here and refactor this to use this passed in repository. Okay, I've refactored my controller. Now it's using repository, and that's groovy. And you can see I've lost a lot of code in here, a lot of repetition. It looks a lot cleaner. That makes me happy. And it also means I can now start writing tests. It's time to start writing tests for my dinner controller here. And one of the things I want to do, and I want to be sure of, is that I am able to use a repository that does not hit the database. I mentioned it before, but it's really important that when you are testing your controllers, you don't involve the database because you might have a connection error, you might have a data error, uh, you could have any number of errors and uh, involving a database, and that would destroy your test and cause it to fail. And what you really want is you want the test to fail because the thing under test uh, doesn't pass the assertion. So what I need to do right now is I need to implement a brand new repository. This repository is going to be known as a fake. It's not going to work with a database. It's going to work with an in-memory list. So down here in my test application, I've created a directory called fakes. And in it, I'm going to create a new class. And I'm going to call it a fake dinner repository. All right. So now what I need to do in this fake dinner repository is I need to implement an iDinner repository. And we can implement this by right-clicking Implement Interface. Now what I need to do is to write some code to fill this repository out so I can use it in testing. Here is the code for my fake dinner repository. And this, as you can see, is just simply an in-memory list. And in the constructor of the repo here, I'm just looping 100 times and I'm adding some dinner objects. What I also want to do is I want to vary the data a little bit. Uh, something I know is that we're only going to show uh, dinners with a date greater than or equal to today. I know we're going to need to show that on our controller. So I want to have some varying dates. Now I might change this in the future, depending on what my tests need. Um, I don't want to go too crazy, because if I need something specific, I could also mock this interface here. But I don't think I'm going to t address mocking today. 
Uh, for right now, I just want to show you how to do a fake repository. So now to use uh, this with uh, the rest of the methods, uh, what I can simply do is just say return dinners as queryable, which is a fun way to turn a list into iQueryable. And then down here, I can return uh, singles. I can add dinners to the list and so on. So let's implement that. And here you go. We are just doing some list operations here where, you know, we're turning a single up here, as you can see, adding a dinner to the list, updating by finding and removing and then re-adding, and then deleting out of the list. So we're good to go with our fake. Now what we can do is use this fake dinner repository. We'll set this as public. So we can use this fake dinner repository in our controllers here and or in our tests, excuse me, our controller tests, and we can write a test. So what I'm going to do is add a class in here. Ready to write the first test, as you can see here, and I've followed Brad Wilson's advice. Uh, if you don't know what to call a test, just call it monkey until you uh, can think of a better name. And that's kind of the first important thing that I want to get across here is no test is ever necessarily permanent. Uh, you can change it as your needs change. And in fact, you probably will split one test into many. So the naming of the first one, well, call it what you like. In this case, what I think I want to do is I want to test the controller, uh, the index action. Might as well start somewhere and start at the index action. Uh, I want to test that it just returns dinners down to the view. Just a real simple test, and that's a great place to start. Now, it might seem like, what are you really testing? And, and it really should be stated that, you know, if you can write your test from a basic standpoint and then get more and more complicated, well, you know, if it fails and you kind of go down a linear path from complicated to simple, well, it makes it easy to narrow down the problem. So what I want to do here is I'm going to give this a name, and I'll just say index uh, should return Oh, let's just say uh, one or more dinners. There we go. My casing is a little bit off, but that's okay. So now what I need to do is I need to create a controller. Okay, so if I run this test now, I can right click here and hit run test, or I can be a good ninja and I can hit control RT or control run test. And it runs, and if I pop up the test results, it passed. So that's all good. Now, if you're a fan of TDD, or test-driven development, you can use that with uh, MVC just fine as well. So let's do that. Let's uh, write another test method here. And in this test, what I think I want to test is the number of dinners that are returned. Now, let's think about that for a second. What dinners should we be returning? Now, this is why I changed the event date in the fake controller, or, uh, fake dinner repository right here. I put a little switch in there to say, well, if it's greater than 50, well, then the events uh, should uh, occur yesterday. And so back in my dinner controller tests, uh, what I want to do now is I want to write a test and say, well, how many dinners am I getting back from my controller? Well, it should only show the dinners that are... Uh, greater than today, or today or greater, I should say. So I should write index should return dinners for today or later. Alrighty. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this exact same thing. And then I want to make sure that there are no dinners that are in this data that occur yesterday. So what I want to do is I want to say uh, cert dot is false. Okay, so this assertion is testing that uh, there should be no event dates in the dinners uh, that occur yesterday. All right, well if I run this, it should fail, and this is part of red green refactor, <clears throat> and it did fail because we have dinners in there you know, that occur. Uh, well, yesterday. So if I come in here, what I can do uh, now, 